cash flow statement includes three different sections. First would be the change in cash for investing the company's non-operating long-term assets. And then second would be the uh, ca change in cash for financing non-operating long-term liabilities in shareholders' equity. And third would be the cash from operations here. And that's where we take our net income and adjust it for non-cash transactions. Now the cash flow statement can be uh, calculated using two different methods here. And that would be the direct method and the indirect method for calculating our cash flows. All right, for calculating our cash flows, I've set up this cash account here as a separate account. And I've done that by taking our total assets here and subtracting out all the other assets. And that leaves us the cash account here. And then, of course, I have the balance sheet here where the assets equal liabilities plus stockholders' equity. And then, of course, we've got our income statement accounts over here. But we're going to be looking at this uh, formula here or equation. And that is what we're going to be used to, using to determine our cash flows. And that here would be the change in cash up here, this separate account I have, minus the change in all the other assets here, plus our change in liabilities, plus our change here in stockholders' equity. And using this formula, we're going to be able to determine our different cash flows. Okay, here we're going to look at our change in cash provided by operations here. And we're going to be using the indirect cash flow method. And this is where we're going to have to convert our net income from the accrual basis to the cash basis. So what we do here is we start out with our net income. And then we subtract out any non-cash revenues that were recognized and add back any non-cash expenses. So we really have uh, two different areas here to deal with. And first would be our operating assets and liabilities. And then for our liabilities here would be like the accounts payable, the unearned revenues. And then for our assets here, we're looking at the accounts receivable, prepaid expenses, inventory, and so on. And those would be for our operating assets and liabilities here. And then secondly, we have those non-operating uh, revenues here and expenses. Like for our non-cash revenues would be accrued interest and notes receivable and so forth. And then non-cash expenses would be like depreciation, amortization, and so forth. So would we uh, subtract out any of those non-cash revenues from net income that we realized and we'd add back any of those non-cash expenses here. So we have this non-operating area here that we have to take care of and then we have our operating assets and liabilities that we have to take care of. Okay, here we're going to look at our change in cash provided by our operations and we're going to be converting over the net income from the accrual to the cash basis and we're going to be using this indirect cash flow method here. So going down to our uh, accounting equation here, we've got the change in cash equals minus the change in the other assets plus the change in liabilities plus the change in uh, stockholders' equity here. So looking at our first example here where we are looking at our operating liabilities here, we look here and we had a plus amount here, a credit or increase of $600 here. So that would be recognized here as a change in liabilities as a plus amount in our equation here. And then it just equates right over here um, to a $600 change in cash because of the equation. Now looking at the situation here where we've had a reduction in our current liabilities here of $200. We would plug that in here and the, um, we show it as a minus amount here and then that converts right over to a minus amount here in the change of cash. Now looking here at our operating assets, uh, that because of the arithmetic uh, change here, we're subtracting those from the current, all the assets here to come up with our cash amount. We would plug that into our equation here where we got minus the change in other assets here. So we had, in this case, we had a $50 uh, increase here in our other assets. We'd put that in, but we'd be subtracting that out. So our net cash change here would be a minus 50 due to the arithmetic. And then the case here where we have a reduction in our other assets, we'd put that in here and we'd subtract, in this case, minus from a a negative amount of 25. That, because of the arithmetic, it turns out to be a positive amount here. So what we would do here, and that would be for our change in cash here. So that's, we've calculated our change in cash here 
for the change in liabilities plus or minus the change here in all the other assets or that we are operating assets here these are operating liabilities so we would total up all these cash changes that we've made here and we come up with a total amount here and that's what we'd have to adjust our net income by this change in cash to convert it from the accrual to the cash basis so let's just look here let's assume that we had um, and the, well our net income was an accrual here uh, basis plus this change in cash that we calculated equals our net income on a cash basis. So let's look here where we'd have a thousand dollars of net income on a accrual basis and then our change in cash here was a plus amount by 375 so we'd add that change in cash to our accrual net income and we'd come up with a net income on the cash basis here of thirteen hundred and seventy five dollars. Now in the case here where our change in cash would have been in a negative amount here we would subtract that from our accrual here to come up with a net income on a cash basis of $750. Okay, in summary here, using this accounting equation here for the change in cash, what it's doing, it's uh, subtracting out any of the non-cash revenues that were recognized in net income, and it's adding back any of those non-cash expenses that were uh, included here in net income. So just remember here, uh, using this equation, just take in this case for the operating out of the liabilities, just look at their change here, translate them over to this cash change, and then for the assets, the same thing. Translate them over, uh, take your total amounts, and that is what you adjust your net income by for changing from the accrual to the cash basis. The change in cash for investing activities involves the company's non-operating long-term assets. And here we'd use the direct cash flow method. So going over here to our uh, equation here, when we invest in an asset, we reduce our cash. And then when we sell an asset, for example, we would increase our cash. So going down here to our long-term assets account here, you can see when it increases here, we reduce our cash. And when it decreases here, we increase our cash. So let's just go over here and look at our cash flow statement. We'll scan over it for cash inflows and cash outflows. Here would be the cash inflows, and here would be your typical cash outflows. And then we calculate the net cash provided or used by these investing activities. Our change in cash for financing activities involves the non-operating long-term liabilities and shareholders' equity accounts of the company. Looking at our equation here for the change in cash, looking at our liabilities here, we would uh, sell bonds, we would increase our cash by the amount of that sale. And then when we'd say redeem those bonds, we would reduce cash by the redemption amount. Then looking at our shareholders' equity here, say the case here where we issue stock, we would increase our cash by that amount. And in the case where we would buy that stock back, we'd reduce their cash. And in this case, we're using the direct cash flow method. So going up here and looking at our liabilities and equities account here, uh, when we reduce our liabilities and equity, we reduce our cash here. We our cash is reduced. And in the case here where we increase our liabilities or equity account, we would increase our cash. So going over here and looking at our cash flow statement for some typical cash inflows here and cash outflows here, you can see that the net cash provided or used by those financing activities would be the difference here between the cash inflows and the cash outflows. Okay, here's a cash flow statement where we've got our operating activities summarized and then investing and financing activities each summarized. Then we take our net cash, increase or decrease during the period, add the beginning cash or cash equivalents, and that would be our cash balance at the end of the period.